Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab. In this lecture, we will walk you through step-by-step -step installation of VMware vCenter Server Appliance 8.0 version. So with that, let's get started. Now, before we walk you through the installation steps of VMware vSphere 8.0 version, let me walk you through the portal where you can actually go and download the bits of this particular 8.0 installer. So before you go and proceed with the installation steps, obviously we need to download the bits of our vCenter server appliance. And to download the bits, you can actually browse through customerconnect.vmware.com website. And in that particular website, you will see a different kind of versions available. So you can search for download VMware vSphere bits. There you will see a drop down window where you can actually select the version, which version bits you want to download it. In this lecture, we are going to demonstrate you installation procedure of 8.0 vCenter server appliance. That's the reason we will be selecting 8.0 version. Now, if you scroll down, you will see a couple of distribution here, essential, essential plus standard, as you could see that. So now let's browse through essential distribution. And that's where we have a VMware vCenter server 8.0 U2. To download this vCenter server bits, you have to click on go to downloads. Now, when you click on go to downloads and right there, you will see the installation bundle of VMware vCenter server appliance. So that is our installation bundle, what we are going to refer for 8.0 VCS installation. If you look at the file size, the file size of this installer is 10.47 GB. That's a pretty huge in size. And if you look at the file type, the file type is ISO. So we are actually going to use this particular ISO installer for demonstrating you installation procedure of vCenter server appliance 8.0. Now, because this file is pretty huge in size, so we have already downloaded 8.0 VCS installer on our local system. So now this is a time for us to let's get started with the installation procedure of vCenter server appliance 8.0. So here is our local system. And if you really see that, we already have an installer downloaded here, VMware VCSA all 8.0 version. So now the very first step, because this installer is in the ISO format, so we have to go and mount this ISO to extract the installer. So right click on it, click on mount. And we have successfully mounted this ISO to our CD drive. And here we have a multiple installer available. We have a VCSA CLI installer if you want to have a CLI based installation, or we do have a VCSA UI installer for the UI based workflow. In this lecture, obviously we are going to walk you through UI based installer because this is the very easiest and simplest way of installing vCenter server appliance. So now let's click on VCSA UI installer and then we have a different kind of distribution here on which particular system you want to execute this particular installer, whether you have a Linux system, whether you have a Linux system, Mac system or Windows system based on your underlying operating system, you can select the right bits because this system is a Windows system. So I'm going to use Windows installer for installing VCSA 8.0. When you browse further, you will see installer file right here. So let's go and click on this installer, which is a very interactive installer. Now, when you click on this installer, you will find a bunch of options here. As you could see that the very first option about installing a new vCenter server, the same installer can be used to upgrade your vCenter server as well from previous version to newer version. And the same installer you can also use for migrating your vCenter server, let's say from external PSA to embedded PSC. And then you have a same installer which can be used for backup and restore as well. So now in this particular lecture, we are only going to focus upon installation of our new vCenter server. And that's the reason we are going to walk you through installer workflow. In the future lectures, we will have a dedicated lectures where we'll be walking you through upgrade, migrate and the restore workflow as well. So now at this moment, let's go and click on the installer workflow because we are going to walk you through installation steps. And the one of the very important thing you might have noticed that this banner says that external PSA deployment has been deprecated. So it's a very well known fact that earlier vCenter server used to get deployed with embedded PSC and the external PSC as well. But then 6.7.0 onwards, VMware deprecated the support of installing VCSA with external PSC. So now your VCSA will be deployed as an embedded PSC only. So now if you really see that the installer itself is a two stage process, you have a stage one and stage two. 
So the very first step, what it's going to do, it is actually going to deploy your vCenter server, which means that in the stage one, your vCenter server is going to be deployed as a VM. And in the second stage, it will go and configure all right side of services, which is required for that vCenter server to be functional. So now let's go and select the stage number one, click on next. Here you have to select the licensing agreement. Let's go and select that. Click on next. Here you have to define the IP address of your ESXi host where this VM is going to sit. So you have to go and provide the IP address of your ESXi host where this VCSA VM is going to get deployed. So our ESXi host where we are going to deploy this vCenter server as an appliance is going to be to be 10.20568.108. Let's provide the username and let's provide the password of this ESXi host. Click on next, click on yes. And once this installer is able to reach out to that ESXi host, it will take us to the next step. And if there's a connectivity issue, then obviously it will throw you error saying that it's not able to reach out to that target host where we are going to deploy vCenter server as an appliance. So now as you could see that it has taken us to the next step, which means that our installer is able to reach out to that ESXi host where this VCS is going to be deployed as a VM. Now let's give a name to this particular VM as SAVCSA-02. Let's set the password of our vCenter server and that password we are going to set it for the root user. Now click on next. Now here it actually asks for the deployment size. vCenter server can be deployed in multiple form factor as you could see that tiny, small, medium, large and x-large. Now, depending on the form factor, you could see that the number of resources, what is going to get consumed by that appliance. Because it's a lab environment, so obviously we are going to go with the tiny deployment size and storage sizes. Again, we are going to make it as default to save our resources. Click on next. Now, this next step says that select the storage location for this vCenter server. Where do you want your vCenter server appliance to be deployed or where its file is going to be? Reside. So we are actually going to select data store one because we just have a one data store with the available size here as you could see that and because it's a lab environment. So we are actually going to deploy or host our virtual machine files or vCenter server files on a thin disk mode. So let's go and select enable thin disk mode to save some of the storage space of a lab environment. And now this is a section where we are actually going to configure all of the network settings for our vCenter server. So you have to make sure that what network you are going to map it to your VCSA. So here we are actually going to select management network. So this is the management network. I want my VCSA to be mapped because this management network is deployed in such a way that it would be helping us to assign the management IPs to our vCenter server. Now IP assignment is always and always going to be static for our vCenter server. Let's provide the FQDN name. for of, of our vCenter server. So our vCenter server FQDN name is going to be savcsa02.lab.local. Let's provide the IP address of our vCenter server 172.16.10.31. Subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. Default gateway is going to be 172.16.10.10. DNS is going to be 172.16.10.10. And obviously we want standard ports to be used, port 80 and port 443. So now if we review this configuration settings, this is our management network. So you have to select this network very carefully. And then you have to provide FQDN and the right IP, IP addressing schemes, gateway and DNS server entries. Now click on next. Here you can actually go and review all of the configuration details once again, that what is the name of your vCenter server, and what are the network details and the data store details as well. Now click on finish. Now once you click on finish, you do see that our stage one, one of our VCS installation has triggered. And what is that stage one deploying vCenter server? Because in this particular stage, it is actually going to deploy VCSA VM on that target host, what we have defined it during the configuration. So let me show you that ESXi host where we have defined it as a target host. And if you really see that, look at that. This is our ESXi host. That's the IP address what we had defined it. 
during installation and if you really see that SAVCSA02 VM is actually going to be deployed. So the deployment is in progress. If you click on recent task, you will see that the deployment is in progress. Look at that. So your VM is actually getting deployed here. Your vCenter server is get, getting deployed here. Now it will take a few minutes before this deployment to complete. So let's take a pause here and let's come back once the VM deployment is done and the stage one of VMware vCenter server deployment is completed. So now, as you could see that your VM has been deployed successfully here. That is our SA VCSA02 VM. What do we see it here? Which means that stage one of VMware vCenter server deployment is done successfully and our VCSA02 VM has been deployed on a target ESXi host. And if you click on that VM, click on console, you will see that this VM is also in powered on state. Look at that. So this is your vCenter server um, console and you do see that this is our vCenter server 8.0 VM and that is what the CPU and memory it's configured with and look at the IP address and the FQDN. So that is the same IP address what we have defined it during the network configuration settings of our vCenter server installation. So now the stage one of our vCenter server deployment completed successfully. So now it's time for us to move on to the next stage of our vCenter server deployment you have successfully deployed the vCenter server. To proceed with the stage two of the deployment process, click on continue. So let's click on continue. And look at that. It's such a nice intuitive UI. What do you have it? Which clearly telling us that stage one is completed. Now we are proceeding with the stage two. And what is the idea of stage two? The, the stage two, it's going to set up our vCenter server with the required set of services. So now let's click on next. The time synchronization mode. So you have to define the NTP server. That is one of the basic requirement of vCenter server installation. So let's select synchronize time with the NTP server. Let's provide the IP address of the NTP server. Do you want to enable SSH on your vCenter server or not? It's always recommended you enable SSH because whenever you want to do troubleshooting, the SSH access really help us out. So we have activated SSH access as well. The next step is going to be really important step because in the next step, it is actually going to ask for SSO configuration. That is your single sign on configuration. And if you remember in the earlier product version, what VMware was having it, we used to deploy vCenter server with the external PSC or embedded PSC, but in the 8.0, they only supports vCenter server with the embedded PSC. So now our PSC is going to sit in the same vCenter server appliance where our VC services is going to be there. Now here it is actually asking us what is the domain name you want to provide to this vCenter server. So let's give any domain name you want to provide it. Let's go with the default domain name which is vSphere.local. Let's not give vSphere.local. Let's give some different a domain name for our own understanding. So we'll give a domain name at let's say govmlab.local. So that's the domain name, SSO name, what we are providing for our vCenter server. The domain name is going to be, SSO domain name is going to be govmlab.local. Username is going to be administrator. Let's provide the password. Now here it says that join an existing SSO domain. Now, because we are just installing our vCenter server, it's a fresh installation of vCenter server. That is the reason we don't have any existing SSO domain to put this vCenter server into the linked mode. So whenever you want to configure your vCenter server in a linked mode configuration, where you want to join your vCenter server with the existing SSO domain, in that case, you can go ahead with the second option. But at this moment, we are just talking about fresh installation of our vCenter server, where we have defined SSO domain name as govmlab.local, and we have provided username and password for our SSO user. So everything looks good. Click on next. Now here it is actually asking us, do you want to join the VMware customer experience improvement program? It actually enables VMware to provide you a very proactive, reliable metrics for your vSphere environment and have a very seamless experience in terms of identifying the health of the vSphere subsystem or vSAN and the other product subsystem. As of now, we don't want to join the VMware customer experience improvement program because it's just our lab environment. So let's go and uncheck this option, click on next. And here we can actually 
go and review all of the configuration details once again. So these are the network configuration details. As you could see that this is your NTP configuration details. And the last but not least is our SSO details, single sign on details. So now click on finish, click on OK. And now you will see that what is going to happen. All of the required services, PSC component and all, all of the other required services is going to be set up in your vCenter server appliance virtual machine. What we have deployed in the stage number one. So as you could see that if you keep monitoring this particular progress bar, you will see that it will keep popping us that what all the services are going to be set up and initiated in this vCenter server. It will take a few minutes for this stage to get completed. So let's wait for a few minutes. So now as you could see that we are almost at the 98% of vCenter server deployment. Now look at that. As you could see that it clearly tells us that stage two of our vCenter server installation is completed successfully. You, we have successfully set up this vCenter server and if you want to access this vCenter server, that is the URL what we should be referring it. So it actually gives us that URL as well. So let's click on this particular URL. That is our vSphere client. So let's click on vSphere client to access our vCenter server. Now this is the login screen of our vCenter server and let's provide the username as administrator. That was the default SSO username. During the installation, we have observed and let's provide the SSO domain name as govmlab.local. And then we have to provide the SSO username password. Click here to log in. Now, as you could see that we are successfully logged into our vCenter server. That is our vCenter server savcsa02.lab.local. That is our SSO username administrator at the rate of govmlab.local. Let's click on this icon and let's Let's look at the about VMware vSphere and look at that. That is our VMware vSphere version, what we have installed 8.0.1. Now it's taking a, a, a bit time to load the summary of our vCenter server where it will be giving us information about our vCenter server. Now here, if you browse through as of now, we don't have any object created in our vCenter server because it's a very fresh installation of our vCenter server. So let's go and try to create a data center and let's give a name as S, S A data center click on OK and you will see that a data center is created successfully. So now this concludes our discussion on how do we perform installation of vCenter server 8.0. So we have walked you through step by step procedure of installing vCenter server 8.0. If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere 0 to Hero Data Center Expert program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our 0 to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands on labs. 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one on one in person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.